Now, these are the guidelines by Royal College of Physicians. They say that uh, it, it, it can be done in three steps. One is self-awareness and training, wherein you uh, know the possibility of the following complication in the patient who are admitted with SCI, like respiratory problems we have discussed, autonomic dysphagia in the lesions at rub of T6, DVT, pressure source, inadequate nutrition, neurological deterioration, bowel problems, bladder problems, musculoskeletal issues, and psychosocial issues like depression, anxiety, mood disturbance, sexual issues are also included here. Specific staff training should be given in particular to all the nursing and medical staff together for the to recognize the symptoms and manage the symptoms of secondary musculoskeletal pain, injury, and contracture, including prevention and management of spasticity, management of AD, management of bladder involvement and bowel involvement by using appropriate techniques. Okay. Emotional disturbance should also be taken care of. Now, assess the patient properly. Like initially assessment should be a complete respiratory assessment, including the pulse, respiratory rate and temperature, oximetry, vital capacity and forced expiratory volume if possible. For post-op patient or increased risk of chest, chest pathology, do a ABG and chest X-rays. For skin and for pressure ulcer risk assessment, there are different scales like Brandon scale, you know, NPOP scale. So grade the any existing ulcers and, or, and try to prevent the ulcers if at all there's a risk. Baseline calf and thigh measurement should be done to allow early detection of DVT. There's a progressive rise and that might lead to suspicion of DVT. Early suspicion of DVT. Urinary assessment should be done like a review of voiding method and pattern. 24 hours voided charts should be taken care. Post void residual volume by catheter or bladder scan. If voiding on urge or by reflex, urinary microscopy and culture should be done to recognize the symptoms of local infection, the assessment and bowel care needs, assessment of bowel care needs, like you have to plan the management accordingly. Nutritional assessment should be done for dietary intake and weight and biochemistry, like albumin, hemoglobin, and all the blood parameters. Full neurological assessment as soon as possible, means once the spinal shock period is over, that should be done for Musculoskeletal assessment using spasticity assessment and assessment of joint range of motion and pain, psychiatric history as well, so that, and this includes both the caregiver as well as the patient himself. Regular assessment thereafter should continue, like in the form of to rule out DVT, calf and skin thigh measurement, look for the skin and pressure changes, pressure areas, and frequent assessment of respiratory, respiratory function and bowel functions, and neurological impairment if it is progressive. And uh, always follow a written protocol wherein you have a written care of plan where you, if the patient is at a risk for AD, you have to advise for the management of AD, both to the caregiver, inform to the caregiver as well as to the rehabilitation nurses. The respiratory management to prevent the prevent or treat complications. Okay, and then thromboembolic prophylaxis has to be given. All pressure source has to be managed uh, to be prevented through and through and, and managed if it is there. Adequate nutrition has to be provided, right? And lastly, uh, the they should have an appropriate discharge planning involving the patient and the family, relevant members of the disciplinary team. The direct contact with the community care team should be done. And before discharge, arrange for all the transport. The housing should be taken care of, means the housing assessment should be done what kind of housing the patient has, whether the house can be modified as per the need of the patient, that should also be done. And uh, yeah, so the patient surrounding should also be taken care of, what how he can do uh, manage things at home, if he can in, and independently carry out things at home, uh, that can be also planned. Lastly, uh, just to summarize total care of spinal cord injury, prevention, of the complication is the best thing. So uh, for that, you have to earliest identify the acute complications. During the transfer to the hospital, when the uh, CI has occurred, spinal cord injury has occurred, there should be a safe transfer in the form of, you know, stabilizing the spine with the help of Philadelphia collar and comprehensive treatment in the hospital, including the neurologist, physician, and a physiatrist and his team, which comprises of, you know, physical therapist, occupational therapist, speech therapist, and and vocational counselors and everything. So there's a team. Then individualized rehabilitation program with tailored physical therapy, occupational therapy and other team members role. 
counseling regarding both prognosis and opportunity should be done after care at home. That is, home-based rehabilitation protocol has to be given to the patient. And also, if possible, look for the financial, financial re uh, rehabilitation and regular follow-up monthly or uh, semi-annually if possible. Now, uh, let me end you with a quote by Sam Strover. The neurological impairment is not nearly as important as the quality of rehabilitation, the social support system, and possibly the personality and mindset of persons with spinal cord injury themselves that determine coping and ultimate satisfaction with their life after injury. Thank you.